David Bonson, the managing partner of the Bonson Group, is here with me with more. David, what do you make of this in terms of sort of this risk on this everything rally, but then maybe some heightened fears on the horizon? I think it's really important to distinguish between a VIX that's normal and a VIX that is hyper low. What was abnormal is not 18 or 19. Abnormal is 11 or 12. It's a healthy disrespect for risk where Mm -hmm. we spent a lot of the year around 12 on a VIX. It's just a very low amount investors are paying for risk protection. 18, 19 is much more average. 15 or 16 has been where we've been uh, plenty of times. And, you know, it spiked up to 60 for a brief minute back in early August. But I don't think that the main uh, indicator of low regard for risk is the VIX. It's credit spreads, the, the spreads in high yield and other things that investors are willing to take to reach out a little bit on risk. It's very, very low. That's a problem. Uh, David, let's talk about real estate, because I know you're trying to shine a spotlight on home prices, housing prices. You know, you're highlighting that since 2019, housing prices have increased 48 percent. But there's kind of two sides to that coin. You know, whether you are trying to be a home buyer, a potential home buyer, or whether you're an existing homeowner and whether that means, how do you kind of navigate both sides of that issue as you're understanding that national conversation? Well, I I love the question because it allows me to make the point that I don't think on the other side of the coin, the homeowner, it's any kind of advantage at all unless you're a home seller. Mm. Someone merely holding a home that they can tell their friends is worth a higher price produces no economic benefit to anybody. If they do not plan to be homeless and they sell their home at a big profit, all that means is they have to go buy another home at an equally inflated and appreciated price. So the higher home prices our country got addicted to only become really economically beneficial to people when they're extracting the equity, like the silliness that we saw back in the early 2000s. Right. The problem is the other side of the coin, affordability. And I don't mean people at 24 years old with no money and, oh, they can't afford to buy a home. That's so unfair. I mean people that have a great job, great savings, great income, great credit. And they can't afford a home because of the artificial constraint on supply. That's what's caused this. It was made worse by very low rates for a long time. Right. But now the, the numbers are what they are. It's out of control. You brought up affordability, David. The Chamber of Commerce is doing a lot in terms of ads on 2025 and what that means for taxes. And the big issue on taxes is in 2025, much of the Trump tax cut Sunset. So these are not hypothetical questions about taxes. They're going to something's going to happen next year. What do you make of the risk of those tax cuts actually going away? Well, in the past, when we've had tax cuts that were to sunset, even when a new party was in charge, most of them don't sunset because tax increases are not popular for obvious reasons. Mm. After President Obama got reelected and he had a majority Senate. And he didn't have to do anything at all. He let most of the Bush tax cuts continue. Mm. So I don't, regardless of who wins the election, I don't think a lot of these uh, Trump tax cuts are going to sunset. But more of them will sunset if Harris wins than Uh, if Trump wins. mm. That much is obvious. David Bonson, always appreciate your insights. Thank you so much.